How to add 10 miles per hour to your snapshot. Utilize weight transfer from one leg to the other. Push your top hand away from your body. Make the focus on pulling your top hand down and back towards your body to launch the puck and strengthen your shooting muscles with hockey specific exercises. That's the quick breakdown, but in this video, I'll dive deeper into each step and then share some of the best drills and exercises you can do to turn your snapshot into a weapon, making you a scoring threat anytime you have the puck. Before we get into the common mistakes I see, let's quickly break down the mechanics of a snapshot. Unlike a wrist shot where you are sweeping the puck from the heel of your blade to the toe, with a snapshot, you are making more of a quick slap or snapping motion toward the puck. The snapshot is done with your skate toe caps facing the net and there are two main variations, taking the snapshot off your inside leg or the leg closest to your stick blade or pulling the puck toward the midline of your body and shooting off of your outside leg. Let's start with the inside leg snapshot. You'll want to push the puck out in front of your body which will allow you to get your hands away from your body while you transfer your weight onto that inside leg. Your outside leg should come off the ice with the weight transfer which will naturally put weight and pressure into the bottom hand to create stick flex as you snap down on the puck. Make contact with the ice an inch or two behind the puck while simultaneously pulling back on your top hand to generate speed and power through the puck. Follow through with your blade low for a low shot or high for a higher shot. The second type of snapshot off of your outside leg has been made famous by Austin Matthews lately as he has used his drag snapshot to score many highlight reel goals since entering the league. For this one, you will be pulling the puck in toward your body as you lift or slide your inside leg backward and transfer your weight to your outside leg. As the puck gets closer to your midline, you will push your top hand away from your body. From here, the mechanics are the same as you snap down on the puck while pulling back on your top hand to fire the puck. One main advantage to this drag and shoot is that you are changing up the angle of the puck to potentially get the shot around a defender's legs or get the goalie moving as he tries to square up to the puck. I also find that it creates some effortless power as you are using momentum and a lot of natural weight shift as you pull the puck in toward your body. But both shots are great in different scenarios and hockey players should have them both in their toolboxes. Now that we know the basic mechanics of a snapshot, let's take a closer look at the mistakes that many hockey players make that could be holding back your snapshot power. Mistake number one is not properly utilizing weight transfer during a snapshot. Similar to how baseball players transfer their weight to hit home runs or pitchers shift their weight from one leg to the other when throwing a 100 mile per hour fastball, hockey players should be transferring their weight from one leg to another to create power. When shooting off your inside leg, this may come in the form of a jump stride where both skates are off the ice for a split second as you jump down onto that inside leg to create power while your outside leg lifts into the air. And with an outside leg shot, this usually occurs by dropping into a deep knee bend onto that outside leg while your inside leg leg drags behind you with your toe cap facing downward into the ice as you can see here with Austin Matthews. I'll show you some drills here for this in a minute. Mistake number two is having your top hand too close to your body, which will limit the range of motion you can get when pulling back on that top hand to generate power. Think of this like the puck is on a teeter-totter. On the left, we have teeter-totter number one, which is shorter and has less room to travel before it hits the ground. And on the right is teeter-totter number two, which is longer with more room to travel. If you apply the same amount of force to both, the bigger teeter-totter with more distance to travel will shoot the puck into the air with more velocity. Keeping your top hand in tight to your body can work for quick release shots where you want to catch the goalie by surprise. But if you want maximum velocity on your snapshot, you need to get that elbow out and push that top hand away from your body. The next mistake is going to be the biggest game changer for most of you and it's something that really helped me improve my shot over the past year and it's changing how you think about a snapshot. Instead of thinking about snapping down into the ice to generate power, I want you to start thinking about pulling violently with that top hand to generate the power. Getting weight into the bottom hand is important to create stick flex, but that will happen naturally if you're using the proper weight transfer. When you shift your weight to one leg, your body will use that bottom hand to push down into the ice to create balance. So it's something we don't even really need to think about. Instead, shift the focus in your mind when you're taking a snapshot to only what the top hand is doing. The faster and harder you can pull your top hand in toward the body, the more power you will generate with your shot. Mistake number four is not doing the proper off-ice training needed to create the most powerful shot. The snapshot, more than any other hockey shot, needs strength, stability, and power from your entire body. It starts with your ankles, which need to have good stability as you'll be shooting off of one leg. From there, your entire lower body needs to be strong and powerful to transfer power while staying balanced. This includes everything from your quads and hamstrings to your hips and glutes. You also need both core stability and rotational power to transfer that power through to the upper body, and it finishes off with power and strength from your forearms, shoulders, and your entire back. Now that we know the main mistakes, let's get into some drills that we can do to fix these mistakes and then run through the best exercises that will allow you to generate more power with your snapshot. Drill number one is a weight transfer drill without pucks. Starting with the inside leg snapshot, we are going to stand facing our target with our weight on our outside leg. Transfer your weight with a step or a jump step to your inside leg as you get your hands and your stick into a shooting position. Perform a few reps just like that and then perform a few reps with a shooting action as if you were shooting a puck while keeping your focus on the weight transfer. After you've done the inside leg snapshot, 
shot, try the same thing with the outside leg snapshot. Start with your stick out wide on your forehand side and your weight on your inside leg. Transfer your weight to your outside leg as you pull your blade in towards your body, sliding your inside leg back and getting your hands in position for the shot. Once you get a feel for that, perform a few reps with the shooting motion. Drill number two will work on getting both your top hand away from your body and focus on pulling your top hand in and down to generate your power on the snapshot. Start by placing your thumb and pointer finger on the stick where your bottom hand would normally be for a snapshot. Push your top hand out away from your body so you've got lots of room to pull back. Now do your regular shooting motion with the focus being placed on pulling that top hand down and back. By only lightly gripping the bottom hand with two fingers, it will force you to think about using your top hand to shoot the puck. To finish it off, you'd want to put it all together with some full power shots, both of your inside and outside legs. Make sure with every rep, you are focusing on proper weight transfer, getting your top hand off your body and pulling that top hand. A great snapshot is probably 70% technique and 30% athleticism. You definitely can't have a great snapshot without proper technique, but once you've got that down, you need to make sure you've got a body designed to take a powerful snapshot. As mentioned previously, this is a total body shot that starts with your ankles and utilizes every muscle group right up to your forearms and wrists. So we can't leave anything out when training for a snapshot. You would need a full program designed to cover everything, but today I will share some of my favorite exercises that will help you improve your snapshot. Number one is the T-stand variations. These single leg exercises are great for ankle and hip stability and overall balance. With a snapshot being done on one leg, it's important to have strong and stable ankles and hips to transfer your power. Number two is skater squat variations. If you pause a snapshot at release, you will see you are almost in this exact position. The skater squat is an awesome exercise for lower body strength within your quads, hamstrings, and glutes while also working on your ankle and hip stability at the same time. Number three is a variation of core exercises. On first look, you may think there isn't much core involved in a snapshot because you aren't rotating as much as you would be with a slap shot, but the core is extremely important for transferring force between the lower and upper body. We will want to work on complete core development, which includes anterior, lateral, rotational, and posterior core training. Number four is row variations. Pulling back on a hockey stick doesn't seem like very hard work, but when you're leaning your weight into a shot and snapping down on the ice a couple inches behind the puck to generate stick flex, it's extremely beneficial to have a strong upper upper back, shoulders, and forearms. These row variations will work on the muscles needed to produce velocity from the top hand pulling motion. Performing these exercises will help you improve your snapshot power, but for the best results, I highly recommend you get started with one of our in-season or off-season training programs that you can find at hockeytraining.com. If you enjoyed this video, can you do me a huge favor and smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel? Let's go.